we're, we are just scratching the surface of how much power you actually have in your brain that you don't use. We're, we're not taught to use it appropriately, I don't think. And uh, so that's exactly right. Uh, the spark is the perception. Okay, we, we talked about that. It's not necessarily whatever the object is that cause, uh, we think causes it. That's external. Okay, that, that's external thinking. There are two types of thinking, external thinking, internal thinking. When you look at your, when you say to that person, uh, it's, you know, and the best example is like a small child when they're like, if, uh, you know, someone else made me, made me do it. Right. And then so with all the way left them, like nobody made you do it. They, they may have told you to do it, but you chose to do it. And that's what we're talking about on a, on a different level here. All right. If someone comes up and insults you to your face and then you lash out and react at them, with, with a with a negative uh, with anger or whatever the case may be, you, you made a choice to do that, I, and I'm not here to discuss whether it was warranted or unwarranted. That's not my point. My point is is that you made a choice. The external thinking is the victimization. I'm a victim. They made me do it. They yelled at me. They don't like me. They did this to me. They did what? That that's a victimization and. And that's what we, that's what we're taught as a child. Okay. And that's our ego playing the part of trying to protect us. We're not the bad people. They're the bad people. Um, the ego's job is to protect us, but sometimes it, the ego lies to us to do that. And so when, when we see a, a, a rubber snake or a snake on the ground, whatever the case may be, and our perception sets that off. Okay, it isn't the snake that did it, it's our perception. The difference between, between the two is monumental because when we take that into the other aspects of our life, like I was just talking about, when we get into people who don't like us, people intentionally trying to hurt us, people who are snubbing us, people who are making fun of us, whatever, we realize that the external circumstances are not the problem. Okay, our perception of them. And then based on our perception comes the reaction. When we understand that, we stop becoming a victim and we start taking control. We start making decisions. When someone insults us, we decide, do we, do we want to react? Is it warranted? Do we want to react angrily? Do we need to strike back out at them? Do we need to laugh at them? Do we need to ignore them? Do, what do we need to do? Do we need to just go in a corner and cry and do our breathing work and our, and our mindfulness and meditation to heal ourselves and make ourselves feel better and the whole gambit in between of whatever that takes. But we suddenly aren't blaming that person for doing it. We're taking ownership and realizing that our perception is what's key here. We're going to work from there. We become the masters of our own, our, our own reality. And that is a cold, hard, truthful fact that will change your entire life. Okay. So when we work from that point, when we know that from an internal standpoint, when we own it, from the perception is where it starts. That's, that's the gate. The perception at the gate is where the whole thing starts. When the stress response is triggered in the body, okay, it is triggered when, when, when we make our perception, suddenly the brain makes a decision of whether we're stressed or not. And the, the actual cascading of the, the, the stress response starts when the carbon dioxide levels begin to rise in the brain or in, in the body, but uh, in, in the body. And then the brain perceives that the carbon dioxide levels are going up. Now, this is critical. It may not seem like a big deal, but this is a really, really, really big deal. Okay. It's not the lack of oxygen. It's the rise of carbon dioxide. Okay, so when we have our, 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 our physical response, you inhale oxygen, goes into the lungs, into the alveoli, the capillaries pull the oxygen out to take it to other parts of the body. It drop, takes it to the tissue, gives them oxygen molecules, but it trades in. It's like, here's your oxygen. And they're like, okay, we'll take your old stuff out. It takes the carbon dioxide. And it's like, okay, I'll get rid of it for you. And, the, and then they, it carries it back to the lungs and we breathe out carbon dioxide. Okay. 
Okay. The correlation here is, is that stress response is triggered by the buildup of CO2 in the body because when you perceive something as a threat, the first thing you do is go, <gasps> you hold your breath. And I'm not going to argue with any of you because you all do it. Everybody does. We either hyperventilate or we hold our breath. If you haven't already in the last couple of weeks discovered that you're holding your breath all day long when you're stressed, start paying attention. Be more mindful. You'll notice that you're holding your breath. It is a natural response. That gasp of air, I just, how many times have you, if you walk around the corner and you see a snake on the ground, <gasps> you clutch your chest, you breathe in, hold your breath, just like that. And it immediately sends a stress response through the roof. Okay, so if the stress response is typically initiated by holding our breath, how do we alleviate it? By breathing, which is why we're practicing mindfulness. Okay, so, um, you know, the holding your breath is just the opposite of the sigh of relief, right? The gasping, you gasp, is just the opposite of, so now you have the antidote. Now you know what causes it. You can catch yourself doing it. When you catch yourself doing it, be nice to yourself, please. 